Hi. My name is Demetrius Spinaeus, and I'm a New York City-based composer and performer. Jeffrey Dean, the artistic director of the Ambul Festival of American and Bulgarian Music in Sofia, asked me to speak a little bit about American composer Steve Reich, who um, is having and celebrating his 75th birthday this year, and which the festival is uh, celebrating as well. So for some of you, particularly uh, the European audience, I want to talk a little bit about Steve Reich and maybe talk about what I think about his music and, and also how he's influenced me as a composer as well. One of the things though, uh, and I think this is a very important uh, fact to bring up, is that um, Steve Reich is associated with a term called minimalism. And in a way, this is a misnomer. Um, Unfortunately, a number of the composers who came into prominence in the 60s and into the 70s, who all used the same type of concepts of repeating figures, were lumped into this category called minimalism. And really, it's an artistic term more than a musical term. It was borrowed from the arts, from the visual arts. And, um, but even if it's some, for some period it actually might have meant something, quickly the composers grew out of this. By the 1970s, uh, none of the music, which would have been initially considered minimalism in the 60s, really uh, fell into that category anymore. If anything, particularly Reich's music, was, for lack of a better term, maximalist. I mean, once you get to music for 18 musicians, and then especially getting into the large pieces like uh, desert music, in the, uh, in the 1980s, these pieces are extremely far away from minimalism. I think the idea of the repeating patterns might have had something to do with this. Yes, uh, with Reich's music, he'll take a concept, an idea. However, in that idea is infinite variety. And this is what makes it very interesting. Uh, Reich himself calls what he did pulse music. I think that's a, that's a great term. There's always this incredible pulse. And I think the incredible pulse is why it has its appeal. It's very modern, and it's also very American. These composers came into being you know, in the generation after World War II. American culture had begun to dominate the world and to influence what was going on artistically. Other American composers were pretty much uh, regulated to the academy writing interesting music, but not music that had any sort of a popular appeal, needless to say. And also, as far as the European old guard, the Stravinsky was really the only other composer still working who had a personal connection with the 19th century, being born in 1882. Uh, all the other working composers were from this past century. But Reich, you know, comes from that generation in and around the beginning of World War II, or at least before a couple of years before America entered it, of course, but, but during this, this period of turmoil, and is distinctively American. And because he's distinctively American, he was um, influenced by American culture. And in music, this was jazz music. And the idea of the repeating pattern in jazz, the idea of the relentless beat of the drums and of the bass, and the infinite variety, uh, the variations that were happening above these, these beats really come out in his classical music. And even though his music does have this very distinctive pulse, you have multiple tempos and layers and dimensions happening all over it. And that's really the beauty of it. The pulse is important because the pulse itself you know, is primal. You know? And it's modern, but it's primal. And it's modern in the sense that this is the pulse of the American city, you know, the energy of New York. And, you know, Reich is a New Yorker. And, but this, this primal inside, this, this primeval pulse really appeals to us. And with Reich as a composer, you know, adding these melodies and repeating these concepts and creating this infinite variety over this pulse is really, really what makes it wonderful. And it makes it infinitely interesting. So the term minimalism, I, I have question with it. I know Reich has question with it. I know the other composers, you know, Philip Glass or um, John Adams and others who have been associated with this 
type of music or this style at this point obviously have, have issue with it. I mean, none of their music sounds minimalist by any stretch of the imagination. Um, you know, calling Reich a minimalist in 2011, it's like calling, you know, Miles Davis a bebop player in, in 1990. You know, it's far removed. Yeah, maybe that's where the start happened, but he's far removed from this. But it has to be understood too, is that even though the music is distinctly American, you know, Reich's music does have basis in music of other um, European composers, classical composers, such as Stravinsky. I mean, everybody was influenced by Stravinsky at this time. And Stravinsky was all about rhythm and pulse. Although, you know, Stravinsky did it differently. It was a different kind of idea. With Reich, it was about the pulse and the infinite variety. And for that, it's extremely appealing. And I think a lot of these composers as well weren't, um, received quite the way they should have been originally because the music, especially getting into the 70s, did to have to start to have more of a popular appeal using very limited harmonic concepts, very singable melodies, at least very recognizable melodies, the idea of very simple chord structures. But that doesn't make it minimal. What it does is they're using a small amount of harmonic and melodic material, yet infinite variety of rhythmic material to create this incredible pastiche, this, this palette of sounds and colors and music. And, you know, anybody listening to the large works, again, I mentioned Music for 18 Musicians, uh, Telling Desert Music, some of these incredible grand pieces, obviously the nuances, the infinite variety is always there. You know, as a composer, it's very interesting. Uh, when I was studying at New England Conservatory and um, my freshman year, I remember, I, um, everyone was talking about desert music, which is, you know, Reich's major piece of the, of the uh, mid-80s. And, you know, at that point, you know, I was a freshman, I didn't really know a lot of contemporary American music. I mean, I, I came from a jazz rock background, and, you know, and as a composer, you know, I, I knew certain other composers. I, I, knew the, I knew the classics, you know, I knew Mozart, I knew Beethoven, at least to a small extent. But I really didn't know music by living American composers, other than my own teacher, but nothing by, uh, for the most part, a major, a major figure. And so everybody talked about desert music. Have you heard this? Which the album uh, conducted by Michael Tilson Thomas, I believe came out in 1985. And uh, so I had to go get it. My album, of course, you know, I, mean a, I mean an LP. And for people of my generation, that was a, that was the main source of uh, music, was from, from LPs. And so um, after hearing all these composers talking, teachers and composers talking about this, this wonderful piece, uh, I had to go out and get it. And I did. And I heard it. And there was an instant connection. And I think it was because I could hear the Americanisms in it. I can understand. I had the, the bridge to the American culture. But, you know, coming from the jazz rock background, the pulse was there, and the infinite variety over the pulse. And, and in hearing this, I was, I was latched into it. It wasn't hypnotic. It didn't make me fall asleep, of course. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't meant to lull me. But if anything, my senses became so acute in listening to it that I, that I really listened to every, um, every nuance. I listened to it again and again and started to really understand, you know, the variety in this music. And, and for me, again, coming from this background and really being able to connect with classical music, which I really, I really couldn't do before, you know, I just really didn't happen for me. Um, I started to see myself more in this kind of continuum and more in this kind of firmament of composers because I thought, okay, this does appeal to me. I understand. I, I understand this, and uh, it was eye-opening. And so for me, um, as a composer, his music has had a great influence. I mean, I don't write minimalist music. I don't write post-minimalist music, but you know, a lot of the concepts, a lot of the rhythmic ideas and the structures and um, the idea of repetition is very important in all of our 
music, and it's really created a distinctive American sound, and which is, needless to say, extremely different from from what the Europeans are doing. Also, European modernism, you know, in the 50s and 60s and the 70s, and then spectral music happening now. There's a real divergence of styles, and uh, you know, never really the twain shall meet in a lot of ways. Although I do believe there is a great deal of mutual respect across the pond, but American composers do have this distinctive style, this distinctive sound. And it all does go back to what Reich was doing in the 60s and 70s. So for me, um, yeah, he ended up being a major influence in so many ways. And probably most of them not even conscious, because never tried to write like Reich. But I always heard it. It was there. The ideas were there. And, um, and that's a wonderful thing. So for me, I, I, I think I would like to play for you what I consider, you know, the, well, the piece that had the most impact on me. And still, I think because of that, still my favorite piece. Um, even though it's, it's over 25 years old now, um, the work still holds so much for me. I keep learning from it, as I think you do from every great work. And uh, I'd like to play part of the first movement of desert music for you. And I'm gonna play this one section, which I really consider this absolutely sublime transition, going from this, this incredible pulse from the beginning, this just relentless, you know, with the, with the voices um, coming in, but the voices not, uh, not singing actual words, just, just vocalizations. And then suddenly there's this gorgeous, sublime transition into this, it's almost a Copeland-esque type of, type of um, harmony with almost like a, a, uh, a renaissance type of rhythm and interplay. And also, in a way, it sounds kind of jazzy if you, you, know, if you actually sing it. And it's, you really hear a lot of the influence on that. So what I want to do is leave you with this, with this section right here, going in from the um, from the uh, transition to where then where the voices come in with actually the text of the music, which is um, from William Carlos Williams. And it also has to be understood too that this, that, that Reich grew up in this, um, this generation, you know, after the, the atom bomb. And this piece has references to that, has references to the bombs being dropped in 1945. And, um, you know, it's, it's in there, the idea of the desert. And, and even though there are times it's beautiful, times it's sublime, there are times it's, it's very barren and very disturbing, also in a beautiful way. So I want you to listen to this, and I'll leave you with that. Once again, thank you to the uh, Festival of American and Bulgarian Music and um, Steve Reich's Desert Music. <laughs>